and welcome to the first ever Wolf Den Wrestling Podcast. Now, this one is going to be a little bit different than your normal podcast. Is these are a little bit previously recorded, and um, it'll actually show people's faces and stuff. I'll be hoping to eventually have an interview with family members and or friends um, that I can talk to about wrestling. Um, if you guys are one of them and um, you're willing to uh, meet with me um, to do an interview about your suggestions on wor- on world of wrestling news and rumors or etc., um, then just comment or get a hold of me somehow and I will let you guys know. Anyways, let's get right into the podcast. Um, tonight's podcast will be more so of a rumors and news type of thing. Um, we're going to get right into it with our rumor roundup. Um, first rumor is Chris Jericho leaving the WWE after WrestleMania 33. Um, if this is true, this could be very beneficial because um, Chris Jericho um, and Kevin Owens' uh, on screen relationship could end up possibly be coming to an end very shortly then. Um, with the Royal Rumble just literally passing, um, I think that it is very much possible for them to eventually start a rivalry with among uh, each other. And um, with that said, so it could possibly be that Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens at WrestleMania 33, could could that be Jericho's final matches? That is my thoughts on that. Um, Because Chris Jericho, of course, will be going back to tour to Fozzie, um, to tour with Fozzie. Um, After their new album will be releasing, um... So it'll be quite interesting to see how WWE develops with Chris Jericho um, outside the picture if this rumor is true. Um, the second rumor we will be talking about is AJ Styles and Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 33. Rumors are stating that WWE is pushing AJ Styles and Shane McMahon to have a match at WrestleMania 33. This could be possibly the reason why AJ Styles dropped the title. At the wrestling pay-per-view for WWE, the Royal Rumble. This could be reason why John Cena has won the title from AJ Styles. It could be the fact that they are pushing AJ Styles to have a one-on-one non-title match with Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 33. Which, in my personal opinion, could be beneficial for both characters. However, I think that um, AJ Styles could possibly be... um, Better in a more title pitcher type thing. No disrespect to Shane McMahon. Um, but I think that um, <clears throat> it is a great idea that AJ would be in a title pitcher. Uh, but who knows? It's just my opinion. Moving on. One key thing why The Undertaker has been appearing on Monday Night Raw is the rumors are stating that could a Monday Night Raw competitor be his WrestleMania 33 opponent? Um, which kind of leads to the Royal Rumble, how Undertaker got eliminated by Roman Reigns. Uh, so it could possibly be that Roman Reigns being his WrestleMania 33 competitor. Uh, but who knows? I mean, Roman Reigns and The Undertaker would be a fantastic match for WrestleMania 33, in my opinion. So I think that it'd be great either way to see who would walk away the winner in the end of this, uh, whole entire tournament. Uh, Thing that WWE is kind of doing with The Undertaker. Now let's move on across the field to TNA. Alberto Del Rio is actually in talks with TNA. Their talks have not yet stopped. Um, so it could be possible that Alberto Del Rio could be heading directly to TNA. After his WWE uh, run has ended. Um, uh, Alberto Del Rio and WWE has kind of a weird relationship. As you all know, so we could be seeing Alberto Del Rio going to heading to TNA. So it could very much possible that uh, could happen. I think that Del Rio would be a great asset for TNA. However, uh, I guess it really ever comes down to whether or not TNA really accepts him and whether or not Del Rio wants to go to TNA. Um, but in my personal opinion... I think he'd be great for TNA. But Del Rio could not be the only person returning to TNA. The other rumors are stating that former WWE manager Zeb Coulter could be heading his way to the TNA roster as 
a TNA NA management team ma member for booking and creative. So it is very much possible this could happen as well because Zeb Coulter has not been appearing on the WWE television in months. So who knows? Zeb Coulter, uh, I think, could be perfect for TNA in a way. Again, much like Del Rio, but again, it really falls down to whether or not he decides to sign with TNA or whether he decides to go elsewhere or do whatever he wants to do. Um, but personally, I think it would be great for his career to uh, kind of be behind the scenes in a management point, stair point now that TNA is under new management. Last thing about TNA for the rumor roundup, Jeff Jarrett returning to on TV screen of TNA shows uh, very soon. So this is another rumor that I'm hearing ever since Dixie Carter kind of dropped herself down into the uh, lesser management point of the view of TNA. I think that it is very much possible for Jeff Jarrett to kind of come back in and be the on-screen character uh, as the authority figure. But who knows? Uh, Jeff Jarrett was a great authority figure in my opinion. However, who knows how everything's going to develop. I don't really know myself, but I think that TNA personally could use Jeff Jarrett as a authority figure for the uh, on-screen type of things, but who knows? I mean, they could just find someone else, like a general manager or whatever, like WWE does, to uh, be their quote-unquote on-screen authority figure. Which leads me back into the WWE and back into WrestleMania 33 rumors. Conor McGregor could possibly be at WrestleMania 33, which could possibly be a very, very, very huge uh, moment in WWE history that another celebrity will be part of. So it'd be awesome to see Conor McGregor inside the WWE. However, who knows whether or not this will actually happen. I'm just think that it would be awesome in my opinion. Now let's move on to our actual news that we do know will be happening in TNA or elsewhere. We have two major announcements to talk about. Let's get into it with TNA. TNA signs a lot of people as of with their new authority figures coming. TNA has been signing a lot of people and they're returning or debuting to the TNA roster. Um, among them people are Brooke Tessmacher, recently returned, as you all seen on TNA. Um, and uh, other, among the other people that actually signed that has not yet returned are Angelina Love and others. However, um, they also have signed a few new people like Josh Barnett, which would be a great asset for the TNA roster. So it would be great to see how everything is going to develop with these characters back in or coming to TNA. I also heard rumors that TNA has brought back Cody Rhodes to a scene, but I don't know much about the scene. I just heard about it, but it'll be great to see what Cody's up to going on after the attack of Lashley on Cody Rhodes. So it could be very much possible that Lashley and Cody Rhodes could possibly be having a rivalry once Cody Rhodes decides to return to the TNA six-sided ring. <clears throat> Now let's talk uh, injuries. Former WCW and TNA wrestler Daphne is undergoing fusion neck surgery, um, which I wish her a very, very, very fast recovery, and I hope that she gets uh, back to the way she normally is, and I hope that she does what she wants to do after the surgery and has no issues whatsoever. I don't know exactly why she's getting the surgery, but I do know that she is apparently getting neck fusion surgery, so it is. it seems like um, there could be an issue among her neck. Um, so, who knows? I just want to say I wish her a, ha a very, very speedy recovery. And with that said, we are going to finish out this podcast this is the first podcast episode, so I hope you guys liked it. I know it was kind of short. I'm hoping to do longer ones as time goes on. Next week's we'll will be seeing about an interview, but I don't have no promises. If not, it'll be another 
rumor and news show and possibly others uh, information as well that I'll be talking about. But before we end this out, I have one more huge topic let's talk about is the winner of the Royal Rumble. The winner of the Royal Rumble was Randy Orton. I honestly did not expect this. I wanted uh, some other people to come back like Finn Balor and everything. It would have been great to see him. But I'm excited to see Ty Dillinger actually debut in the Royal Rumble. So this could possibly be a call-up to the main roster for Ty Dillinger, which would be a great asset for that. But let's talk about who won the thing. Randy Orton was absolutely a surprise winner for me. I honestly thought that Goldberg was winning because WWE put him out there to be like to getting another championship run and everything. So it would be and everything. But it is absolutely great that Randy Orton came out and won the match. I absolutely was on my feet when Randy Orton came out and won the match. The way he did and the way everything won about in the Royal Rumble was absolutely fantastic. And I think altogether it was a great Royal Rumble pay-per-view. And I think that this is a huge, huge uh, spot for SmackDown Live to grow on. With Randy Orton, a SmackDown Live competitor, winning the Royal Rumble over Raw competitors. And so it, it, it would be great to see Randy Orton win the WWE Championship on WrestleMania 33. Whoever the champion is, whether that be John Cena or whoever it, it may be. With that said, let's end this out. Next Tuesday will be another Wrestling Wolf Den Wrestling Podcast. Have a great day and peace out, everyone. And I hope to see you guys all back for the next episode.